What's going on guys and for the win here we are back with our franchise mode as the Ottawa Senators and uh, here we are picking up where we left off at the trade deadline and uh, maybe considering a move but maybe not making one. Now the thing is there's not the market's pretty pretty slim right now for a trade especially for a shutdown defenseman and uh that can create some problems. You'll notice I already made a couple changes in here. Terrell and Shabbat weren't getting a whole lot of points. So I'm going to actually switch them around here. Get Terrell back in the top four. Odell back in the uh, top two. Just to see if we could spread some of the scoring out a bit more uh, in our top six. And uh, see if that would benefit us. We have been improving defensively and goaltending wise. So that's good. Um, we'll see if that keeps going upwards here. Because that's kind of what we need. But the thing is, we still have another year on a Ginless contract. And that's, I think, going to be one of our main trading pieces for uh, a defenseman. And we have plenty of other, you know, value assets that we could chuck in there. And as there just wasn't a whole lot available on that front this year, making a huge splash just might not really work. So I think we're going to maybe just continue as is and keep these lineups and just kind of push for the playoffs like that and play the long game here and hope for you know something better next year and uh, things like that because forcing a trade through right now taking on more cap is probably not the best the best uh, call right now for the roster and the team overall so that's kind of my two cents on it what we can do though is take a look see if we can actually grab any more picks for uh, this year if we can't then we can't i don't really remember it's been a couple days so let's see we can grab one more pick for this year has to be a third or later so we can grab like a decent third for something uh let's check on what kind of assets we could throw Oh, maybe not. <laughs> we have, like, all low elites here. Uh, there was a top four defenseman who I could throw in. 61 at 20. I wouldn't mind chucking this guy away. Yeah, you can go. Or we can grab, like, a better pick from next year. But let's see what a really, really bad team third would look like for this year. They don't want to give it up, but that's... Oh, yeah, we'll have to get another pick from next year, something like that. Let's see if we can get a second, then a... Er, oops, that's Nashville's. I think we want theirs. Yeah. Would that be good? Mm, that might be a little bit too much, but let's see what they say to that. Too far off. Okay. I don't necessarily need a, a fourth for this year. Or a third for this year. I can even grab a fourth from this year. We just need one more pick. That should actually do it right there. Second from next year. Fourth from this year. Not quite. I think I want... Hmm. Something like that then. Yeah, well, that, that should go through. There we go. Okay, so it did work out. Not a high enough, higher, mm -hmm, what am I trying to say? Not as high of a pick as I may have hoped for this year, but the main one is this one from next year. And that we don't even have to, we already have too many picks, but we don't have to make the picks this year. I'm talking about in the, uh, in the first two rounds. We could always ship this off in a trade. And that's likely what we will be doing. So, all right, let's, uh, I think that's going to be it here. Like I said, there's not a whole lot to choose from on the shutdown defenseman side of things. There might be some better, better options come next year. And I don't want to force something through just to be making a move here. And we have slowly been improving on that end. So really what I think we're going to do here is continue on and get to the playoffs because we are, we're right there. I mean, we're in third place. We're not, I don't think we'll be making, well, we might make it in the second. We're not going to be taking the division. I know that, but we should, if we keep playing consistently the way we have been, we're, we're easily in the playoffs and that's, that's all that matters. Anything can happen after that. So let's, let's see what's going to happen then. Can our goaltenders continue to improve? Can our defense lock things down? Will that change help us out on the, on defense that I put? We'll see. A lot of questions that will be answered here by this next stretch. 
Uh, ooh, Griffin didn't didn't like my extension I offered him. All right, fine. Uh, Norris accepted. Marner accepted. And Lafreniere rejected. That's unfortunate. Well, we won a couple games right there. All right, Toby. Oh, Tobias Retz. <laughs> I keep wanting to say Toby Reader. I see it pop up, and he's not even on this team. All right, let's put him in there. Won a few games here. I do want to go back and take a look at those contracts. Let's end it right there. Do we? I think we lost that game. No, we won that one too. So three wins right there. Uh-oh, Samsonov's injured, but I think it's just minor. So that's good. Pretty rough, though, that Lafreniere not wanting to accept that extension. Oh, my gosh. It's just outrageous, the cash he's asking for. <sighs> this is rough. Might have to do a one-year thing and then hope <laughs> he'll come back. I don't know that he will. We'll do a one-year thing like that. It's an extra five mil. Yeah, Griffin not accepting. I could always tender him and wait and offer something else or wait to match the deal. I do want to see where he goes more than anyone else, though, really. And this isn't a bad deal for him. I don't know if I want to do three years. Well, let me do two at, like, two and a half. Because that'll be worth it. Even where he's playing right now. But he's definitely someone I want to hold on to. Because he may actually be, like better than balsers and be a better person in that role we'll see all right yeah samson off fully healed now so just a very minor injury for him griffin okay griffin now accepted the op okay lafreniere so it's a one-year extent we're basically just playing for him to want an extension by next year essentially don't know if it'll happen but we gotta hope all right so two losses in a row there another injury to our ahl to our top line not great. Do we have anyone that could just kind of fill in there and be decent? Not really. But whatever, I don't care. Where's the other one? Three on three. You know, put Lear in there. I just want to replace him. Make it easy. Don't care as much about my AHL right now. All hands on deck for the NHL. Ugh, three losses in a row. Not good. Got to answer back here. Nope. Two years left. Nope. There we go. Good answer. Klimchuk's now back. That was short-lived for Lear. But good that we have Klimchuk back. Okay. Keep going here. Nice. All right. Couple wins after that. That's what we needed. Anaheim's a good team. We lose to them, but we get a point out of it. We're keeping the puck out of the net relatively well, which I do like. And let's see what we got for draft stuff here. I do, yeah, a bunch of medium elites that we have scouted in the mid-late rounds. And low elites, enough of them too. Yeah, we're pretty much set. <laughs> All right, Retzer's back now. It's like the second injury or third injury he's had this year. All right, back in he goes. Another loss, man. Bad stretch right there, but we could pull out of it. Or not a great stretch to start the month, but a couple wins right here. We'll be right back to where we need to be. Ooh, that's a tough reg loss. That's a tough one. You hope to at least get a point out of a game like that. Good, okay, we shut, down, shut out Pittsburgh in turn there. Then two more wins, okay. One more win for 50, come on, do it. Ah, oh, we did it, beautiful, all right. So 50, what's our last game going to be? Okay, luckily these are all to our AHL and none to our NHL. That's really fortunate for us going into the playoffs here. 
I'm just going to stick Percy in there. He's good enough. Come on now. One more game. What do we got, Ottawa? All right. Won that one in the shootout. 51, 24, and 7 is our final record. we got to sim up a couple days here at least to get into the actual end. All right. Oh, we're facing Tampa in the first round. So they have home eyes, so we didn't surpass them in the standings. Which is a bit unfortunate, but that's the way she goes sometimes. Good season for Lafreniere. All right, so there we are. Oh, yeah, we're four points behind him. Strong division overall. Goals four, two point, or sorry, 3.23 goals against 2.6. So that has continued to improve. Power play 21.7. Penalty kill not great. And power play is not amazing either. But it's okay. Only two shorties for... At least I think the penalty kill has gotten better throughout this year, though. So that's at least good since we made those changes. Maybe it'll be really good in the playoffs. We'll see. All right. For total points, there we are. Denisenko did get a 60-goal season. Lafreniere, 89 points with 74 assists. Denisenko, 60 goals, 82 points. Worrell, you know, almost 70 points, 25 goals, 44 assists. Griffin, really good, but we dropped off quick, pretty hard after that. Marner with 56, McElhaney only 47, Norris only 44. Was hoping that making that switch there in the top four would help them out, get some more points, but there's still a, like a drop-off right there. Not a, not a lot of points from our defensive end, like as much as you kind of would expect, really. Yeah, I thought we, sh mm, we should have, maybe could have got a bit more, but we just didn't. Not horrible. And goaltenders, you know, he vastly improved, Samsonov did. Really. I mean, compared to where he was at, he ended up with pretty average or decent numbers, I should say. So, he also played 70 games. So, yeah, you can't really hate hate Samsonov this year, at least. I still feel like this is his last year. We need to start handing it over to the young guy. Z. Maybe even again, look gets another little jump and he can play a little bit of spot starting while the other guy takes over the starting role for the next year. But yeah, not bad. I want to check something. Just because it's fun to check. Okay. Not a whole lot. But a decent chunk of fights. Not that that matters at all in any, <laughs> in any sense, but... It's nice that, oops, I need to check out actually the entire league stats. What am I doing? Let's see here. What do we got? All right, entire league. There we go. 97 points, Jack Hughes, 56 goals. Kucherov, 97 points, 52 assists. Lafreniere, though, right in third, 89 points. Not a huge, no one cracked 100 this year. Pretty interesting. Dennis Enkel is also up there. So we got a couple guys in the top 10 here. Not bad at all. Dennis Enkel, yeah, pure goal scorer. So him and Lafreniere playing together is really, really good. It's just Lafreniere is just one insane cash, and it's getting a little annoying, but what can you do? <laughs> Let's see the plus minus leaders here. Only plus 34 is the top. Okay. Shot takers, I think. Oh, it wasn't even him. I think because Warrell was shooting a good chunk, but dude, that shooting percentage is out of this world. Yeah. That's pretty nuts. <laughs> it really is. So yeah, I'm honestly thinking like when if McElhaney gets up there, two playmakers with Denisenko could be even better. Maybe. Game winners. Hughes, Line, Stamkos, and Paling all tied with 10. But Paling and Stamkos only had like 30 goals. That's pretty impressive amount of game winners for their goals that they had. Power play goal leaders, Hughes. Well, yeah, Denisenko up there with 14, but not a whole lot. Look at that power. Yeah, I guess we had two units doing pretty good, but still a little interesting. I like how Hughes and Zadina are on the Red Wings in this one, too. <laughs> it's like it's like our, our own franchise in Detroit, but being played by someone else. Interesting. All right, so. Oh, yeah, shorties. Shorties are always fun to check out. Only three was the top, and that was Howden. Total points, five for Shmilevsky. How good did he get? Hmm. Cool. 
Might, it's probably only top six, but he might be actually pretty decent. Yeah, he has 63-point season. All right, defensive numbers here for the forwards. Hughes, uh, I could make a pretty, pretty big run there for that Selkie. Yeah. I mean, face-off percentage is great. Good amount of hits, decent chunk of block shots, really good defensive stats. And I don't see anyone who can really beat him. So that's my two cents. I think Hughes might actually take home the Selkie there. We'll see what happens. All right, defensively. Oh, God. Drew Doughty. 36 years old Drew Doughty gets the most points for defensemen. Who would have thought? <laughs> Kale McCarr was 60, 35 goals. Good old creative player shooting a shit ton. And uh, though Hedman in my opinion, might win the Norris because, damn, plus 63. Mm, less ice time than Makar, but really good ice time. More hits, less block shots. Huh. I don't know. If, if the game really favors plus minus, I think it goes to Hedman here. He's only seven points behind, and that's insane. Hit that, that pairing right there, Sergachev and Hedman, is an actually insane pairing. Wow. <laughs> that really is crazy when you think about it. All right. Let's check out the goaltenders here. Who's tops? Ooh, my goodness, Gibson. Gibson alone, I'd say. Yep. <laughs> Pretty look at Oh, my God. It's not like he had an like, incredible record either. That's just, he carried. John Gibson, still carrying Anaheim. Many years later. Jeez, man. That's crazy. All right, and rookies here. Luke Ray on Boston. Fifth overall pick. Center playmaker, only 86 overall. 61 point season at a minus two. Now, there's probably not going to be any rookie goalies who did that good, but I'm checking him anyway, because I like to. Wow, Lindblom. <laughs> Dude, he's starting, and he's, oh, poor guy. Yeah, that's not even a good class to look at for the rookie goaltenders. <laughs> oh, man, he had to, look at those numbers. <laughs> that's not even fun. Jeez, man, poor guy. She's like, hey, we're trying to tank, let's just throw this AHL goaltender in there. All right, let's do the fun stats here. Hits. Someone. No, oh, no one's hitting 200, but Timo time up there. 193 hits. What kind of seasons he having by now at age 29 in his prime? 55 points. All right. Fights. Let's go. Oh, my goodness. Yep, here we go. Jalen Chung, 20 years old, 6 foot 5. Dude, what kind of. He's an elite two way forward, but he's fighting. <laughs> And then Ernesto... Le oh, they're both on the... O what? They're both on the Oilers. That's 43 fights between two guys on the same team. So Oilers pulling a 70s Philly or something? I don't know. This guy's a high elite now, but... Look at their point totals. It's like... <laughs> if they stayed out of the box... <laughs> it would be good. Jesus. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's kind of ridiculous. Okay, fun stuff. Like, how's it even, like, uh, they, I don't even know how they got that many fights just on one team alone. That's pretty nuts. Okay, so Tampa, we got to face that top shutdown pairing, which is a little scary. And by a little scary, I mean a lot scary. Because, you know, they got Vasilevsky back there, too. And, you know, we've at times struggled with getting scoring from a bunch of different places. Pitkin and Point Kucherov, strong. Stamkos back on the second line with uh, Janssen and Miller. Hoffman, Reisner, Obergauer. That's, they have incredible depth. Yeah, this is ridiculous depth. Okay, and... Oh, wow. Okay, um... This is might be worse. Oh, they don't have yeah, that's right. They don't have Vasilevsky anymore. So if Tyler Parsons struggles, we might have an in, but 
offensively and defensively, you know they're pretty good. Yeah, they did struggle overall with the scoring, but again, so did we. But maybe that's our end. Can our does, is our offense elite enough to overpower theirs? Maybe. We hope so, but we don't know. Let's see. We could always make some changes, swap things around. So we'll see what happens. But, uh, I mean, you compare them to us here. Our first line is definitely better. Second line on paper is better. Third line maybe on paper is better too. But I think their fourth line maybe edges us out slightly. Defensively, we're really good and spread out. But we don't have just the depth of talent that they do. That's for sure. Goaltenders are pretty even. Uh, but Samsonov, last time he was in the playoffs, did incredible. So we got to hope that he's able to duplicate that for us now. Or else we may be in trouble. Especially if their goalie does really good here. So we don't have home ice advantage. So we'll see what happens. Tampa had a good regular season. But we were very similar. We both had good goal scoring. But lacked really, really good shutdown defense. Can we flip the script here in the playoffs and get some incredible goaltending from Sansonov? Time will tell. Game one. Let's see, Ottawa. What do we got for them? Nope. Four to one loss. Kind of opposite of what I hoped for. Their goalie did good. We didn't score. Game two. If we lose this, we got to switch some stuff around. So let's get a win right here, guys. That's Belleville. Oh, that's our goalie. No. Stop it. Stop getting injured. Ugh, that's rough. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was actually out too. Hold on. There we are. Put him in there. <sighs> Come on. No. Two losses in a row and we didn't score. Yeah. Good defense. It happens, but not what we needed. Really not what we needed right here. So let's let's try something for the future. Yeah, we're going to make a future move right here. Two guys who can score. And you know what? Let's go back to the pairings we had before. Terrell Shabbat and Odell. Damn, man. Not good. But let's see. Let's see these moves. McElhaney on the top line here. Just because that's what I kind of envision the future to be. Don't know if that's correct or what, but let's try it out. On home ice now. We got a win here. Big win coming up. Come on, guys. Switch it around. Get the goal scoring here. No, we can, still can't score. Yeah, it's pretty much over. We just can't score. They have a really good defense, and their goaltender showed up now. So, get swept. <laughs> we scored a total of seven goals in four games with this kind of offense. So, we make it back to the playoffs only get swept. I don't. A shutdown defenseman wouldn't have done anything right there. It's just with this team, if it's not one thing, it's the other. I don't get it. It just doesn't make sense to me. Dennis Enko did nothing for us. Like, huh. I don't know how much more we can do here. <laughs> I'm trying to think. What else can I do with this team? It's like comical at this point. We keep getting to the same spot and then ending up with pretty much the same result or not getting to the spot we need to I but this is the ticket right I think Warrell Marner on a line would be really good Norris you know, we got him to a better contract for next year, I think. So third line, maybe trade Logan Brown. Or maybe have him third line. And then keep Griffin. Maybe get Balsers out of here. And then restructure this fourth line to be defensive. Hold on to Anisimov, Batherson. But maybe Kulikov and the other guys. We definitely need more defensive type guys. Quinn Mathers, unfortunately, just not built super well. Just make that switch, I think. Have, you know, Norris and Brown, third line with Griffin. That could be a hybrid defensive and scoring. 
and then just go full defense for the fourth line. And you see Bob Batherson and then and then someone else who's good defensively. <sighs> but Griffin, I'm thinking, might even be ready for second line. Because if we make that switch down, we'll have a gap here. Griffin, I'm thinking, might be the guy to fill that. I don't know. He's... I don't know. <laughs> I'm a little stuck here. Marner can be hybrid. I know Warrell can goal score. This guy could be more of the passer. Norris Brown and someone else third line could be really good. Maybe even Kulikov, but he's kind of done by the looks of it. I really like Anisimov in the depth, but I don't know. Again, trying to force a trade through probably still wouldn't have worked for the defense because we just didn't score. Like, that was the issue. We couldn't score. Samsonov, and he didn't do good either. So it's just like everything. <laughs> Once again, everything kind of fell into a funk. And I don't know what it's going to take to get this going. Because it feels like no matter what I try... Things just don't quite work out. So I don't know. Uh, <laughs> a little stuck here. A little stuck here. I'll check out. Let me look at some contracts here. See if there's anything else I want to have my eye on. Balsers, again, this guy might be... Guy, like, he did good in the playoffs, like three points, like, but he was a minus. He only got 42 points this year. Not a whole lot of power play production like he's gotten in the past. He's injured a lot last year. I mean, it wasn't a bad year for him, but... It wasn't fantastic by any means, I don't know. Maybe Logan Brown's the guy to go. There's just so many questions. And I can't even say I have the answers. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm I don't know. I've tried tried a different retool, tried different things. I wanted to be patient, but we didn't even make that series competitive. We just didn't score. And with this, how can you not score? One point for Shabbat, who's a minus. It just seems broken. <laughs> and I do not know what you can do to fix what's going on here. So... I don't know. We got some uh, thinking to do here. Decisions to make again. And like I said, pushing for a shutdown guy wouldn't have helped that much just because you saw we, we, just, we didn't score. And I think that comes down to our second line not scoring enough. But at the same time, our goals for average wasn't bad. It's just maybe a little weighted to the first line. I don't know. But they didn't show up in the playoffs. So tough, tough call. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to figure something out. That's for sure. Because once again, underperformed for what this team on paper looks capable of achieving. So got a lot to figure out here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to leave that like and I'll see you in the next one. If watching my videos just isn't enough sin for you. Be sure to go over there on Twitter and shoot me a follow. And you could even join our Discord server as well to talk with some of the other sinners out there. The links to both are in the description.